Thank you again, my brother, Jamel Michael Lewis. I thank you for this wonderful opportunity. So even before we get into our message, I want us to first honor God with the word of prayer as we uh, bow our heads or lift our hands or however it is that you reverence our God. So God, Father, right now, I just thank you for this time. Thank you for this time of worship. Thank you for the time of singing for the time of sacrifice that each and every person has taken out of their schedule on today, that we are making the Sabbath holy, that this is a holy day unto you, that this is our sacrifice that we give back to you for everything that you've poured into us. So Father, I thank you that you accept our worship, that it is a sweet smelling savor unto you, that the sound that is coming from our lips, that the sound that is radiating from us, that every hallelujah, that every thank you, Jesus, that every Lord, I love you, that everything that comes out of us, that pours out of our hearts is accepted by you. I thank you for being a good father. I thank you for being a perfect father. I thank you for being a provider. I thank you for being a protector. I thank you for being El Shaddai. I thank you for being Elohim. I thank you for being Jehovah Jireh. I thank you for being more than enough. I thank you for every single name that you are. Because at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess that you are Lord. So God, I thank you right now as we enter into this time of word that you would remove me out of the way and that you would allow people to see you as this word is delivered on today. In Jesus name, amen. Amen. So once again, I thank my brother, uh, Jamel Michael Lewis. I call him Pastor Jamel because (laughs) he's gonna get me for saying that, but what he's been doing is pastoring people during these, I guess it's been about 10 weeks that he's been doing this, this journey and and, and worship. And he's been leading people in the area of worship and singing. And I think it's something that he should be commended for. So thank you everyone who has supported uh, Jamel Michael Lewis and his ministry, uh, his beautiful wife, Christy, Um, and his amazing young son, little Jamel. I give you guys honor right now um, for even having this page set up. Um, I thank God for the brotherhood and friendship and even the thought to come together to do this. Um, Because many times you'll see individuals with gifts and talents, but they they don't always learn how to mesh and work together. And I'm grateful for the brotherhood and friendship that I have with Jamel because there's never any contentious contentious moments. That's how you know that this brotherhood and friendship is ordained by God. So thank you again. So I wanna just dive right in. I wanna get into this word. I won't be long. Um, I want to introduce myself. I'm sorry if I had not introduced myself. My name is Jason Shepard. Some people know me as Jay Shep. Uh, I am um, in the midst of planting a brand new church in Los Angeles, California, called Illuminate Church. So um, I guess soon to be Pastor Jay, Pastor Jason, whatever. I don't really care about the titles, but just kind of giving you a little bit. For those who have not met me, I just want to introduce uh, myself to you um, in that way. And for those who also don't know, I am also a gospel artist, a songwriter, a musician. And this is actually how I connected with Jamel, was through music. Um, So today I want to talk about worship and just continuing um, with why we're here. And so <clears throat> I think something that, is, that has happened in church within the body of Christ, if I can be like really transparent, I have some notes here. Um, so if you see me looking away, I'm just sitting, I'm looking at my notes. Most of what I wanna say, I'm gonna share from the heart, but I do have some notes um, that I'm gonna refer to and we're gonna go to scripture 
in a couple minutes. Um, but I just believe as uh, believers and as members of the body of Christ, so the church as a whole, the idea of singing and worship has been marginalized by worship teams, worship leaders, and musicians. And I don't mean that in the sense that worship teams have hijacked worship. I don't believe that worship leaders have hijacked uh, the singing or musicians have hijacked music. But when I say marginalize, I truly believe that the worship portion that we see in many of our churches has been deduced to these are the people who are the singers. These are the people who are the musicians. These are the worshipers in the church. When really and truly, when you are a believer, your worship becomes the sacrifice of your life. The worship becomes the life and the breath of the believer. The worship is our highest form of communication that we have to the most high God. So what has ended up happening is we come to church and worship has become a spectator event. I don't want to say a sport, but it becomes a spectator event. You know, you can go to church and you know what the praise team is going to sing. They're going to do their song. Oh, give thanks unto the... And you're going to tap your foot and you're going to clap your hands a little bit. But you don't lock into, oh, give thanks unto the Lord for he is good. We Like if we really begin to unfold and unpack these songs that we are singing, that we're being led into, the experience of worship will really change in our lives. Now, let me let me let you guys in on a little secret that there is an enemy. There is a devourer. There is uh, something that is that is contrary to God and his power and and his people. And we know who and what that enemy is. He has a name, Lucifer, Satan the devil, right? He is there to marginalize even more our song. I'm going to say that again. Satan is there in the midst of our lives, in our daily lives, and what we see, what we consume, what we watch, what we listen to, Satan is there in our daily lives to marginalize and corrupt every single good and perfect thing that the Lord has ordained. So this is why we come into a sanctuary and we haven't been able to gather um, for the past few months. So, it, it, But now we're finding a place to gather online, which is awesome and amazing. But think about what we do throughout the week. And sometimes I found myself, I'll speak for myself personally, and I will go to scripture in a second. So y'all might say, you talking, but you ain't you ain't opened your Bible yet. I'm getting to the Bible in a second. I know some of y'all are like, when when you gonna take a text? I'm gonna take, I'm going to I got a lot of scriptures to read. So <laughs> but I was thinking about this last Sunday. And even as a musician, as a songwriter, as a worship writer, this has been a season where I have not really felt a writing or a singing inspiration. If I can be transparent, I have not felt like worshiping. And if I can be even more transparent, my worship life has actually taken a dip. Now, my prayer life has been on a rise. My listening to word and it being in my word has been on a rise. But my song had been on a decline. And I went on this past Sunday, I went out on a walk and there's a, a couple preachers that I really love to listen to and I was listening to their word I was listening to a word that one preacher was speaking and 
before I got into the message that he was preaching on YouTube, he said, you know, before I go to write a sermon, I got to make sure I spend time in worship. And he said, the problem with many of our preachers is that they do a lot of study and preparation to bring a word, but not enough of us are spending time in worship. He said, worship will allow for your heart to be softened and for you to be sensitive to what the Lord is saying. I turned his message off and I turned on worship music. I said, Lord, you just gave me a message before I got into his message. I began to worship. I began to listen to the songs and to, to singing. And all I could do as I was walking was lift my hands and cry and pour out because inside of that song were things that God was trying to reveal through me because our singing is an ultimate expression that we give back to the Lord, right? So Satan knows this because when Satan, before he was kicked out of heaven, his responsibility was to be a worshiper, was to be a singer. So here's what he's done. He allows for people to be in the land, to take songs and to corrupt our, our minds, to corrupt our confessions, to corrupt uh, our words with lyrics. As we repeat these lyrics as incantations, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say something. Some people may not agree with it, and it's okay. But when we take a song like Old Town Road and we repeat the phrase, can't nobody tell me nothing, and we let our children repeat that phrase over and over, that song stayed number one for six months with our children saying that and we're wondering why we can't tell our children anything it's because in their spirit their worship was can't nobody tell me nothing that became their worship now some of our worship that we're giving back is i'm a savage classy bougie ratchet that's our worship you're offering your worship to being a savage. I'm not trying to get too deep, y'all. I'm going to go to the scripture to tell you specifically how our songs should be used, right? So now, if we go to Acts the 16th chapter, I told you guys, I had some Bible for you, and I have a Bible sitting right here. Acts the 16th chapter, the 16th through the 27th verses. I may not read them all, but I'll, I'll kind of skip around if I need to. So here's the 16th verse of Acts, the 16th chapter. And it came to pass as we went to prayer, a certain damsel possessed with the spirit of divination met us, which brought her masters much gain by soothsaying. The same followed Paul and us, cried, saying, these men are servants of the most high God, which show unto us the way of salvation. And this did she say, and this she many days, I'm sorry. But Paul being grieved, turned and said to the spirit, I command thee in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And he came out the same hour. And when her master saw that the hope of their gains was gone, they caught Paul and Silas and drew them into the marketplace unto the rulers. All right, so I'm gonna put a pause right there. So Paul and Silas were on their journey preaching the gospel in the streets and they encountered uh what they call her a damsel possessed with the spirit of divination it was a witch they encountered a witch on their journey right and paul uh paul cast the witch cast the evil spirit out of her now, this lady who was a witch was paid to be that. 
you had these people that were paying um, these witches to go out <laughs> and basically um, give potions to people, not to heal them, but to keep them in entrapment, in an entanglement, right? So here's Paul casting out this spirit out of this evil witch who knew immediately why they were here, okay? So Paul and Silas get locked up in jail. So let's get to the 20th verse. And brought them to the magistrate saying, these men being Jews do exceedingly trouble our city and teach customs which are not lawful for us to receive neither to observe being Romans. And the multitude rose up together against them. And the magistrates rent off their clothes and commanded to beat them. And when they had laid many stripes upon them, they cast them into prison, charging the jailer to keep them safely. Who, who having received such a charge, thrust them into the inner prison and made their feet fast in the stocks. All right, so this is the part right here where worship comes back into play. Cause you're like, man, you, wrote a, you read a lot of scripture. What does this have to do with worship? What does this have to do with singing? Here's Acts the 16th chapter and the 25th verse. This is where your song comes in. And at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God and the prisoners heard them. Verse 26, and suddenly there was a great earthquake so that the foundations of the prison were shaken and immediately all the doors were open and everyone's bands were loosed. And the keeper of the prison awakening out of his sleep and seeing the prison doors open, he drew out his sword and would have killed himself supposing that the prisoners had been fled. But, but Paul cried out with a loud voice, do not self thyself no harm for we are all here so here's what happened they got to singing they got to worshiping see these men who were caught these men were were hebrew men these were were men who were on their journey they, these were um i'm gonna say it, they were dark-skinned hebrew men of the tribe of judah uh, actually, Paul was of the tribe of Benjamin, but these men were men who knew that worship was the key to communicate. See, when many of our ancestors were in bondage to slavery, we understand what the Negro spirituals were, what they meant and how they've been passed down from generation to generation, that as they were seeing in the fields, it would communicate not only to the slaves, but it will communicate to God. And the slave owners would marvel at the way they were able to sing. They're sitting there watching them in a trance, but did not understand the level of high communication. Thank you, God, that the song meant. So you mean to tell me that Paul and Silas locked in jail, that they were brought, they were put into chains right? They were locked down. They sang a song. Do you think that song that they sang had anything to do with being a savage or nobody telling them nothing or being a diva or, or any other kind of foolishness talking about, I don't mess with you. Do you think that was a song that they used? I'm trying to help us right now because throughout the week, we get so frustrated and inundated. And let's, let me tell you something. This season that we're in is a midnight season. This time of this pandemic, this time of this racial discord, this time of this uh, racial uh, inequality, this time of abuse, this time of police brutality, all these things that we're seeing right now is a midnight. We are at midnight. I dare someone to type that in. We're at midnight right now. And so many of us have been feeling at midnight. Many of us have lost our jobs. Many of us are in unemployment. Many of us can't even get unemployment. Many of us didn't get a stimulus check. Many of us can't, don't know what's gonna happen from week to week. Are we gonna be able to keep our house? Uh, will, our love, will we be able to see our loved ones again? Many of us have lost loved ones. Listen, there's never been a midnight like this 
that we've seen as a people. So throughout the week, what are we flooding our minds with? What kind of songs are we singing throughout the week? What are the things that are getting us through? And see, here's the thing. We come to Sunday and we want Jamel to bring us through with his song. You want to you want to turn on another worship leader, which is great. It's good to be inspired by another singer or worshiper. But what are you turning on during the week? See, it's the time when we try to pacify ourselves. It's when we got that downtime, right? And and during our downtime, what are we listening to? And I can't hear the people asking, you know, is it a sin to listen? I'm not saying, I'm not telling you that's a sin. I'm not going to tell you that listening to to hip hop is a sin or that R&B is a sin. What I'm telling you is that it's a gateway to corrupting your confession. It is a gateway to corrupting your confession. Let me tell you, let me, I I wrote something down. I don't want to forget this because, you know, the Holy Spirit is just allowing for me to to share this from the heart. But I I did want to write this down. So Satan wants to corrupt your song because here's the thing. If Paul and Silas had a corrupted song, they would have been locked in jail and they would have stayed in jail, right? They, the, the idea was for them to get locked up to die in prison, right? Let me tell you what midnight is supposed to do to you. Midnight is supposed to kill you. Midnight is supposed to destroy you. Midnight is supposed to take you out. Midnight is supposed to make you quit. Midnight is supposed to be the thing that's the death blow. Ain't nothing good happening after midnight. Y'all know that. They say, man, don't be out in the streets after midnight. Ain't nothing going on. See, I'm I'm 40 years old. I don't don't be out late anyway. I'm at the crib. I'm not trying to be out. But what I do know is that back in the day when I was younger and you hanging out and it's midnight, you got to ask yourself a few questions. Do I need to be out in these streets? Because what good is happening after midnight? Nothing. Nothing good. So a lot of us are in that nothing good phase in our lives, in that nothing good time in our lives. And this is what the enemy wants us to see. So he wants to corrupt your song. Let me tell you this. A corrupted song plus corrupted worship will equal corrupted communication. And many of us, I'm going to say that again. A corrupted song plus corrupted worship will equal corrupted communication. And I'm afraid that the gateway that the enemy has come into our lives is coming in the form of music and singing and the music becomes our confession. It becomes the thing that we live by unbeknownst to us. We, you know, we have people who are tick in their way to numbing their pain, right? It's, it's the thing you do to numb your pain. You do your little dance on TikTok. It's just, oh, I, oh, I felt good. I like that song. Boom, boom. This me, I'm good. Oh, that's cute, girl. Oh, that's cute. But what are we, what is it saying? What's the confession behind that? See, I, I know this word is not an easy word because a, a, a word that a, a minister, that a preacher, that a prophet brings should bring some kind of friction into your life to make you examine yourself. I'm not here to judge you. I just want us to all examine ourselves. And like I told you, I went through an examination of myself and I said, Lord, even me as a songwriter as a musician I don't worship enough so even for people who quote unquote do this thing we do this for a living we don't do it enough it's the gateway to communicate so think about what Paul and Silas how they were singing this song how this song that they sang got the prison to shake with an earthquake, and here's what it did. I love what happened after this. The person that was standing guard saw what happened, and he was afraid and was gonna take his life. And Paul said, hold up, no need to do that. 
ain't nobody went nowhere. Why is that? Because when the presence of the Lord enters the room, you can't move. Whew. When the presence of the Lord enters the room, that cloud that comes, you are literally frozen and nothing that is going on even matters. So Paul and Silas were free, but their freedom was all about being a part of this glory. And here this prisoner is, who's not a worshiper, who hadn't believed yet, he wants to kill himself. But here's where the believer comes in and said, don't kill yourself, man. This man asks, what do I have to do to be saved? And here's what your worship is gonna do. Your worship is going to lead somebody. Your worship is going to bring in the people into the body of Christ. Jamil, your worship is going to lead thousands and thousands upon thousands of people into the body of Christ. It's going to make people ask the question, what must I do to have what you have? This is what our worship does. I'm going to go to one more passage of scripture and I'm going to be done. I feel God even in this place. Even as I sit and I do this um, in this office, I feel God in this place. You know, if you feel God in this place, just type it in the comments. Just say you feel God right where you are. I hope this is ministering to somebody right now. So I'm going to go to 2 Chronicles. 2 Chronicles. It's easy to do it on your phone. But if you, you may have to close your phone up to do it, but it's all right. I should probably put it on the screen. So 2 Chronicles, the fifth chapter, verses 12 through 14. 2 Chronicles, the fifth chapter, verses 12 through 14. Also the Levites, which were the singers, all of them of Asaph, of Heman, and Jehethun, uh, their sons and their brethren being arrayed with white linen, having cymbals and psalteries and harps, harps, stood at the east end of the altar and with them 120 priests sounding with trumpets. And it came to pass as the trumpeters and singers were as one to make one sound to be heard in praising and thanking the Lord. And when they lifted up their voice with the trumpets and cymbals and instruments and music and praised the Lord saying, for he is good for his mercy endureth forever that then the house was filled with the cloud, even the house of the Lord, so that the priest could not stand to minister by the reason of the cloud, for the glory of the Lord had filled the house of God. So what happened when Paul and Silas sang and gave praises in that prison, the same thing that happened in Second Chronicles, the fifth chapter, that the glory of the Lord entered the place, it was so heavy. It was so heavy. It said a cloud filled the room. Now, you don't, you don't have to uh, have a smoke machine and all that kind of stuff. And I'm not against that. But the cloud that entered the room was the presence of God. So understand what your song carries. Your song will carry the presence of God into a room. That's why we must watch what we confess with our mouth. How we worship. The Bible says they that worship him. God is a spirit and those that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. So God is connected to the worshiper. God responds to the worshiper. God responds to our song. God responds to our singing. God responds to the things that are connected to him. So right now, if there's anyone who's watching this that says, you know, my song hasn't been connected. I've been disconnected. Um, you might say this something that, that I want. You're saying, what must I do to be saved? So the first thing I, I want to do is just commend you for understanding that you need God more than anything. So the first thing I want to do is just say, man, welcome. Second thing I would say is that you would just confess with your mouth, believe in your heart that Jesus died and he rose again for the remission of your sin. So accept him in your heart. Believe on him that he died and rose. 
that's the first step. So Father, I thank you right now for those who have said that they're ready to give their lives to you. I thank you right now that you are bringing in, uh, that you're bringing your people back together, that you are uh, looking for Judah to respond and to gather and to be in direct response to our call to be worshipers, to be praisers, to be singers. God, I thank you right now that we are changing our confessions, that we are changing our song, that even throughout the week, that we will watch the things that we allow to infiltrate our ears and that we will actually sing throughout the week, that we will be intentional about worship throughout the week, that we will be intentional about our communication to you throughout the week, God. God, I thank you right now um, that you are uh, allowing for us to do our first works over, that you are allowing for us to come back to you, surrender our lives, our minds, our ability, our hearts back to you. Father, right now, if there be anyone who is sick in their body, who has ailments uh, with back issues, shoulder issues, um, just issues in their, just their general pain, God. I pray for those who have general pain right now in their body, that wherever they have felt that pain, that even now as I speak this prayer, that that, that pain will be gone. Father, I pray for those right now who have um, financial, um, that are in financial disaster, God, even as tax time came this week, um, they went into depression. God, I speak over those who went into immediate depression as tax time came, because they don't know how they're gonna pay their tax bill. So God, I pray over those uh, individuals right now. God, I pray over the individuals who um, are afraid about unemployment being cut out. Father, I just pray that you would give them supernatural business ideas to turn around their financial situations. Father, right now, I just pray for families. I pray for marriages that are on the brink of breaking up, broken marriages. Father, I pray for those husbands who um, who, who are confused on how to be a husband properly. God, Father, right now, I just come before you now on behalf of those husbands to, to show them uh, what they need to do as a husband, that you would just open open them up to your word, Father. And even for wives who, who are confused about what it means to be a wife, that you would just open them up through your word, oh God, and that you would bring these marriages back together how you intended. Father, look upon our children right now, that you would bless them and keep them during this time. Raise up our children to do things that are greater than we can even uh, imagine to do, Father. God, just continue to bring us together, even during this time of this pandemic. Father, I just believe that you're gonna kill this virus. Father, I believe that, that you're going to kill this virus and you're going to allow for us to be able to gather in ways like never before. So Father, even as you're killing the virus, I thank you for wisdom as we go out, that we go out and we use our mask, that we're not afraid to, um, to you know, follow the things that are being set before us, that we're not going out there being defiant. We know that you're gonna turn it around. So God, we, there's no need for us to be defiant because we know that you came to heal us and protect us and shield us. So Father, I thank you for this opportunity to minister to your people. And I pray that this week will be the greatest week that they've seen in 2020. In Jesus name, amen. All right. I thank you all for this opportunity once again. Um, if you want to be a blessing to, um, to uh, the ministry, I, I have how you can give via Cash App or Zelle. And I don't charge for the gospel. The gospel is free. But if something that I said today um, pierced your heart and you would like to give, I would, I would truly uh, love it. And if you would want me to connect with you personally, to pray for you individually, please shoot me uh, a direct message. I will pray for you individually. And I look forward to coming back and doing this with you guys on a weekly basis, all right? So uh, once again, don't lose your worship, all right? This is Pastor Jay, Jason Shepherd. I love you guys. Peace and blessings. Yo, good afternoon, family, and welcome again to Sunday Session. This is Sunday Session Part 10. I hope you all are enjoying your day. I hope you all have enjoyed the word by my brother, Jason Shepherd. Uh, we are here to worship. We are here to bless God 
and just want to be an encouragement to each of you to continue to walk with the Lord. So we're going to get right to it. We pray that God would fill our homes with worship, fill our homes with praise, and fill our hearts with his glory, y'all. This is Sunday Session Part 10, and I'm so excited and honored to be with you. So let's worship, y'all. We're going to start with a hymn, a little blessed assurance. If you're ready, won't you sing along? If you got a story. Y'all know how we used to do. Praising our Savior. All the day long. Here we go. Blessed assurance. Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine heir of salvation purchased of god born of his spirit washed in his blood sing the chorus say this is my story this is my song praising my savior all day long this is my story this is my song praising my savior all the day long second verse says perfect submission perfect delight Visions of rapture now burst on my side. Angels descending ring from above. Echoes of mercy, whispers of love. This is my story. This is my song, say, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. Third verse says, perfect. Perfect submission, all is at rest. I and my Savior am happy and blessed. Watching and waiting, looking above, filled with His goodness, lost in love. Come on, y'all say, this is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. Come on, let's declare. This is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior. All the day long Come on, say This is my story You say This is my song Praising my Savior All the day long This is my story This is my song Praise Come on, y'all. Won't you shout hallelujah? Glory, hallelujah. Anybody got a story? Anybody going to praise them and tell their story all the day long? Come on, God has been great to each of us. God, we love you. We honor you. Even now, bless this time, Lord. We give you glory. 
All of our worship, all of our praise, all the glory belongs to you, Lord. Come on, withholding nothing. God, we surrender to you. Hallelujah. Thank you for your grace. I surrender all to you. Everything I give to you. Withholding nothing. Withholding nothing. Lord, I surrender all, all to you, everything, Lord, I give to you, withholding nothing, withholding nothing, I surrender. And everything, Lord, I give to you, withholding nothing. Come on, you say, withholding nothing, withholding nothing, yeah, withholding. give you all of me, Lord. Yes, I do. Can we say, I give? I give you all of me. I give you all of me. I give you all of me. Lord, I give you all of me. I give you all of me. Yeah. Everything I have it all belongs to you, oh God, I give you all of me, oh God, I give you all of me, yeah. King Jesus, you're my Savior, forever I give, I give you all of me, I give you all of me. You're my Savior. God, I give you my heart. I give you my mind, my soul, everything in me, God, belongs to you. Won't you declare that? Don't forget, y'all, share this post as we continue to bless the Lord. Share this, y'all. Leave your comments. Send us some hearts. Come on. And of course, worship along. Everything that is within me, Lord, I will bless your holy name. A little water break. Sunday session 10. Come on, y'all. Won't you sing with me? I will bless the Lord. Oh, my soul. And all. Within me, bless his home. Holy name. Come on, wherever you are, won't you declare, I will bless the Lord. I will bless the Lord. And all that is 
within me. Bless His holy, holy, holy name. Come on, if He's been great, if He's done anything, won't you declare He has done great things? He has done great things. You can even leave that in the comments. Say great things. He has done great things. He has done great things. Come on, if he's a miracle worker in your life, won't you say he has done great things. I will bless his God is a great God. You and I are miracles just the same. I will bless the Lord. Yes, I will. Oh, my soul. Come on, everything you have. And all that is within me. I will bless his holy. I will bless his holy. Yes, I will bless his holy, his holy name. Come on, for all the great things he's done in your life. Won't you declare? I will bless the Lord. Oh, my soul. And all everything that he within me I will bless I will bless his holy I will bless your holy name with everything that I have oh God I will bless your holy name yeah come on say he has done great things Come on, if he's done anything, won't you declare? He has, he has done great things. Come on. No matter where you are, he has done great things. I will bless his holy. His name is holy. His name is righteous. His name is awesome. I call you faithful, yes I do. You're worthy, yes you are, oh God. The Lamb of God is who you are. Glory belongs to you. Honor belongs to you. Your works are wonderful, oh God. And I know it, I've experienced it for myself. You're so worthy, yes you are, and we bless your name, oh God, bless your holy name, for who you are, who you are, oh God, God we honor you today, we sing your praises, we give you glory and honor, you are God, you are King. You are Savior, you are our Redeemer, our Deliverer, yes you are. Prince of Peace, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, yes you are. I will bless your name, I will bless your, your name. Won't you lift them up, y'all? Won't you give them glory? Blessed be the name of the Lord. His name is holy. God, you are our source. You are our strength. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Keep that in mind, y'all. God is our strength. 
He's our deliverer. He's our provider. He's our healer, our protector. Lord, we lift our hands. We lift our hearts. And praise, total praise, adoration, worship, and glory to you. Let's get through this one, y'all. Here we go. Together. Here we go. Lord, I will lift mine eyes to the hills, knowing my Won't you give them glory? Keep sharing this, y'all. Sunday session part 10. Hallelujah. 
to everybody watching y'all, don't give up. Don't give in. Whatever you're going through, wherever you are, stay the course, y'all. He didn't bring you this far. He didn't bring me this far. He didn't bring us this far to leave us. So let's say, I won't give up now. I just can't. I just can't give up now. I've come too far from where I started from. Nobody told me that the road would be easy and I don't believe that he brought me this far to leave me. Can you help me say I just can't? I just from where I started from Nobody told me that this road would be easy and I don't believe he would bring me this far to leave me You know this time can we encourage each other say we just can't give up now we just can't give up now. Come on, encourage your Sunday session family. We've come too far from where we started from. Nobody told me that the road would be easy. But for all of us, I don't believe. He would bring us this far to leave us no, no, no. I just can't, you just can't, you just can't give up now. Come on, hold on. You've come too far from where you started from. Come on, you may not be where you want to be. And nobody told you the road would be easy I know it hasn't been easy but I don't believe that our God would bring you this far I don't believe he would bring me this far I don't believe he would bring us this far he's the God of the universe and he sees and he knows he cares for you. He wouldn't bring you this far. No matter where you go, no matter where you are, He won't leave you. He won't forsake you. He will keep His promise. Yes, He will. I don't, I don't believe that He would bring you this far. He won't leave you. Yeah. He's walking right beside you. Yes, he is. He's faithful. Yes, he is. I just don't believe that our God would bring you this far. Come on, we used to say that he's brought me a mighty long way. Yes, he has. I may not be where I want to be. But I'm not what I used to be I don't believe He brought me this far To leave me He won't leave you, no He's right there, yeah Come on, put that in the comment He's right there Yes, He is Greater is He that is in me, yeah. We're more than conquerors through Jesus, yes, we are. So keep the faith, yeah. Hold on. Greater, greater, greater.
greater is coming and he will never leave me yeah come on y'all he's faithful and he keeps his word y'all whatever he's done before in your life y'all he can do it again and again and again and again so thank you all again for joining me shout out and thanks again to my brother Jason Shepard elder Jason Shepard for coming on and leading us and bringing the word there's something else we wanted to add um, here today and moving forward uh, on various broadcasts so thank you again for being here for uh, a very special part 10 of Sunday session we will continue to keep the train rolling because you're here every week so thank you so much for joining thank you to everyone who liked this post who uh, has continued to share this message and to continue uh, worshiping with us each week thank you so much for your giving your donations they are always timely so whenever you are able to give it is greatly appreciated of course it is not mandatory but it's greatly appreciated in keeping uh, this ministry going uh, we have been able to get some lights going get some cameras going get some microphones going uh, get music uh, on here so thank you for your giving and your uh, just your energy period that you all bring to this broadcast it really 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 keeps the flow um, in us spreading the great news that we have and the gospel of Jesus Christ so again thank you so much Sunday session part 10 Jamel Lewis music I always love always music and I will leave with a word of prayer uh, before I go father in heaven again thank you so much for this time of worship and praise we honor you we love you we adore you and we are just grateful for your grace for your love your mercy and your kindness toward us God to each individual watching this God I pray that you would bless their homes bless their relationships bless their families bless their resources bless their finances bless their working and job situations God I pray that you would just touch every area of their lives God and the things that you have called them to do and called them to be, may they swiftly move in that direction, God. May they turn toward you in all of their ways and all of our ways, God. May we acknowledge you in your presence and just the fullness of your glory in our lives, God. May it be realized. May we maximize and max out, God, on the potential that you've placed inside of us, God. We love you. We honor you. And we just are so grateful for this time that you've given us to come together creatively to bless your name corporately and collectively. We've gathered together for the past two plus months, God, and you've met us each time. So we are so grateful for that and just for your presence and your faithfulness in our lives, God. Your word declares that it continues throughout all generations. And that is what we believe. We stand on your promises. We stand on your word. And we trust you, God. So just continue to bless us and keep us as we travel along the way together. We love you again, God. We honor you and we bless you. In Jesus name. Amen. Jamel Lewis music, Sunday session. Always love, always music. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. God bless you.